one in two Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. So odds are everyone in this room knows someone who's been affected by the disease. And even if you don't, we all know people like Gord Downey or Terry Fox who've been able to make such an impact in the face of their diagnosis. What I find so unbelievable to this day is that when my family and friends think of cancer, they think of me. When I was in my second year here at Queen's University, I was diagnosed with a type of blood cancer called Hodgkin's lymphoma. I remember hearing that word in the hospital room, cancer, and blood cancer. Blood is like everywhere in your body, right? So that obviously can't be a good thing. I remember my doctor telling me that I had a 10 centimeter tumor in my chest and a three centimeter tumor bulging out of my neck. I remember him telling me that I'd have to leave school right away and go home to start chemotherapy and radiation treatment. And all of a sudden, the questions started flooding into my mind. Well, what even is chemotherapy? Well, I read online I have an 80% chance of survival, but will I be in that 80%? How am I gonna tell my friends and family about this? If I lose all my hair, am I gonna be one of those people with like a bald, lumpy head? Don't really want that. All these questions started flooding into my head and they didn't stop for the next two weeks until I started my treatment. And so on that day, being back home, I walked into the hospital with my family. I was given an ID bracelet. I sat down in a pretty comfy chair and I waited. I knew I had reached a starting line of a journey in my life that was the hardest I'd ever faced, and I was terrified. That was when I met the first nurse who would administer my chemotherapy treatment throughout my whole process. Her name was Trish. And to this day, I swear Trish has the ability to read minds because as soon as she met us, she knew what we were thinking. She answered all my questions about treatment and about life with cancer. She talked to me thoughtfully about what was going on, and she was just there to chat with me about anything that I was thinking. As soon as she started talking to us and explaining to us what was gonna go on, I felt my anxiety wash away. And before I knew it, three hours later, I was done, my first treatment. I left the hospital feeling considerably worse for wear, but also confident and comfortable knowing that I had a team of amazing nurses like Trish who wanted me to get through this experience with everything in my corner. They were there to support me. So I had a great start to my treatment, but that didn't last long. As the months wore on, the chemo really started to dig its teeth into my body. Uh, I really felt the effects. Six month, three months in, I had lost all my hair. I'd gained 60 pounds because of the medication I was on, and my lung function was down to about 70%. I could barely walk up a flight of stairs, let alone be willing to drag myself into the hospital for another treatment. So it was tough to get out of bed every morning and face that next hospital appointment. I remember the night before my seventh treatment, about halfway through the process, sitting in my bed, thinking about the day that was coming. I honestly didn't want to wake up the next morning. I knew that I had so much left ahead of me, and I had already gone through so much and had so many people behind me. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it through. But naturally, the next morning came and I woke up and I remember having to take my medication for the, for the day. I had to swallow these tiny little pills and when I tried, my body completely rejected them. Every time I gagged on these tiny little tablets, it reminded me of all the things that I couldn't do. It reminded me of how, the, how it affected me and, and all that it, this process had taken from me. So with that in mind, I walked into the hospital for my next appointment, just like the first time. I got my ID bracelet, sat in the comfy chair, and decided that for that day, I was just gonna try and fall asleep. I didn't wanna be awake for this process anymore. But this day was different. I look up and I see my mom talking to a woman next to us. She was older than me, but unlike my sullen and quiet behavior, she was bright and positive. She lit up the room with her demeanor. She was so happy. She explained to us that unlike me, she didn't have resources or family to connect her. She didn't have someone to drive her to her treatments and support her. She had nothing. She lived alone in her apartment and she relied on resources from the Canadian Cancer Society like their Wheels of Hope program that got her to and from her treatments or her peer support group where she was able to meet all of her friends that helped her get through every treatment and relate to her. I had to take a step back and look at myself. I had all of these amazing resources around me, a network of beautiful family members and friends who wanted the best for me, and everything I could imagine to help me get through my treatment. 
And yet I was still down and sullen, where this woman, who had nothing, was living her life every day with joy and trying to spread that joy to those around her. That really impacted me. And so when I left the hospital that day, still feeling really worse for wear, I thought, I'm going to adopt that, per that personality. I'm going to learn from her and, and use this experience to spread that joy that she found every day. So I went on with this attitude throughout the Western Med treatment, and before I knew it, I was done. I had finished 12 chemotherapy treatments and over 20 radiation sessions. And all of a sudden, I was cancer-free. I was a cancer survivor. And I didn't really know where that le left me. I thought that after that, I would go back to school, I would go to the gym, and I would get back to normal life. But I learned the hard way that being ripped out of a life governed by hospital appointments and cancer treatments was just as hard as being put back into it. My mental health had suffered just as much as my, as my physical health did, and I found it really hard to connect to people around me. I felt like I had gone through such, an, such a big change in my life, but no one was able to hear it from me because I couldn't communicate it to them. I felt alone, and I felt scared. But all that changed when I went to my first Relay for Life fundraiser, right here at Queen's University, actually. I got, to, I got to the event, and I was so grateful to participate because I had seen the impact that organizations like the Canadian Cancer Society had made on people that I was in the hospital with, fellow patients. I finally was able to be healthy enough to give back and participate. And what I found at these events is that I was able to connect with other people who had been affected by cancer. And when we connected, we weren't talking about how our struggles made us sad or, or down or how we struggled with them. We talked about how they improved us and how we learned from them and how we were given the opportunity to connect, to connect because of that. Today, I work for the Canadian Cancer Society as a fundraiser, and I'm able to go to Relay for Life events all the time and see the amazing work these people do and how they connect so well with people who've been affected by cancer. And it's shown me that through connecting with people and sharing our stories, we're able to improve the lives of people in our community, just like at these Relay for Life events. It's been a beautiful thing. Every day, 604 people are diagnosed with cancer on average. On March 25th, 2017, I was one of those 604 people, facing a seemingly insurmountable challenge ahead of us. But when I look back on that challenge, I don't see all the bad things that came from it. I see my attitude and how I was willing to learn and grow from this challenge. And the best part about it is you don't need a cancer diagnosis to adopt this attitude. We all have obstacles in our life that define us. But my challenge to you right here, right now, is to embrace these obstacles and learn from them. Because it's that attitude that transformed my cancer treatment into one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Thank you.